Shoto smiled as yet another one of his classmates wished him a happy birthday. Today was his 18th, and to say the least, it had been a good one so far. Most of his presents had been cute anecdotes of his relationship with everyone in the class. Plus, the few gift certificates to his favourite restaurant was a great thing in his eyes. Not that he had been counting, but he was missing one gift. From you. He hadn't seen you all day, only catching your swinging hair as you seemed to avoid him. Now the two of you were close. You had even stayed up to send him a birthday text at midnight this morning, but now you were avoiding him better than most. Seeing that his birthday landed on the weekend, he didn't see you at breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Hell, he was sure you hid behind Shoji when singing Happy Birthday. To say the least, he was confused and had wanted to spend the day with you. You were one of his closest friends, and it annoyed him that you weren't around. But it was too late. Nearing 11 at night, Shoto called it quits on seeing you today. His hands were shoved into his sweatpants as he climbed up the staircase, his brows furrowed as he wondered just why you weren't around. Opening the door to his floor, his eyes trailing to the right side of the hall, the hall that held the girls' dorms. Loud and boisterous arguing of the girls echoed in the halls, and Shoto watched as you were somehow fighting off all six girls of your class. He stopped in his tracks as he watched you fend off Uraraka's fingers while resisting Suyu's and Jiro's hold on you. Mina and Hagakure screamed as they tried assisting Uraraka and Momo was fretting loudly in an attempt to stop them all. Shoto's lips quirked into an amused smirk as he watched your body drop against the floor, trying to wiggle out of the hold you were in. You have to do it! Mina screamed over the loud noises you were all making. I was joking! You screeched as three pairs of hands grabbed your thrashing legs and began dragging you down the hallway. Traveler, you don't have to... Oh, Tarugi! Momo's eyes widened as she noticed his arrival. Hi. Shota replied as your torso shot up from the floor. Your face was flushed from the struggle, your hair was a mess from being dragged, and your eyes were full sources. You okay, Traveler? Shoto? You squeaked as you stumbled onto your feet, your hand immediately scratching the back of your head as you laughed awkwardly. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> um, happy birthday! Thank you. <laughs> Shoto smiled as you nodded, laughing loudly again. <laughs> so, uh, uh, see you tomorrow! <laughs> you exclaimed, moving to leave. But the girls were five steps ahead of you. A present was shoved in your hands, and you were pushed into Shoto's chest as the six girls hurried away. Don't let them go until they give you their gift! Mina yelled as they disappeared behind the corner. Shoto's eyes looked down to your face that looked ready to die. Um... So you want to come to my room? Shoto asked you, and to his satisfaction, you agreed. It didn't take long for the conversation to flow out from you two, a whole day without a discussion being made up as you entered his room. Your eyes shone with unworldly energy as you sat down on his bed, your arms shooting in animated fashion as you explained a dream you had last night. Shoto crossed his arms as he sat beside you, while you finished the rest of your story. So what did you get me? Shoto asked, nodding towards the blue bag in your hands. <laughs> Arrogant munch? You playfully scoffed, pressing the bag to your chest. It's actually a present for me! From yourself? <laughs> we all have to treat ourselves sometimes! <laughs> you snarked as you giggled, shaking your head. You handed over his gift. Open it! 
Shoto's body warmed up as he opened the bag and pulled out a bag of his favorite chips, a new outfit, and a handwritten card from you. Sorry, it sucks. You whispered as your eyes glanced up at him. Things are super expensive, and I'm broke. His eyebrow quirked as he looked at you. I love it. Thank you for the present, Traveler. A relieved smile spread on your face as you clasped your hands together. Well, I'll leave you alone now. Good night, Shoto. Sorry for ignoring you all day. Shoto watched as you stood up, your hands flattening against your pants as you smiled. Why were you ignoring me? Did I do something? I just don't understand why you ignored me and then you were fighting with the girls earlier. Shoto stood up, his eyes locking on your frantic ones. I lost a bet. You spoke slowly, your head dropping to keep your eyes hidden from his own. I'm supposed to repay today, but I've been a coward. How can I help? Shoto asked as his arms folded again. He wanted to help you in any way he could. If it's money, I can give it to you. <laughs> you laughed, shaking your head, but there was a tremor to your shoulders as you looked back up to him. Promise you won't hate me? I could never. Shoto watched as your face turned rigid, your lower lip trembling with uncertainty, with fear. Concern filled him as he wondered just what exactly he could do to help you. What was the terms to the bet? He hoped it was nothing... serious. There was something warm and soft pressed against his lips. Strawberry and vanilla flooded his senses, and everything felt perfect. Shoto couldn't process what was happening, and he was nowhere close when you pulled away just as quickly. Good night! Happy birthday! You squeaked as you ran into the door before fumbling to open it and running away. As the door to his room closed, Shoto's fingers pressed against his mouth. Your kiss seemed to be imprinted into him, a memory he wished he could change now that it was over. Did that mean... Did you like him? The kiss wasn't spoken about. Shoto might as well have dreamt it, but he knew it was real on account of those giggling female classmates of his. They seemed to increase in chaotic energy whenever he was around you. Knowing smirks, sparkling eyes, and teasing words. Had it not been for them, he might have convinced himself the kiss was a dream. But there was also the fact that you could never seem to look him in the eyes anymore. Shoto was too awkward to talk about it, his words continually failing him when he wanted to sit next to you. However, even with the subtle change in your relationship, some things didn't change. It was one in the morning, and Shoto was wide awake when a knock pressed against his door. Getting up, Shoto opened the door to see you holding a blanket and a pillow. The yellow luminescence of the hallway lights seemed entirely too bright as Shoto's eyes adjusted from the dark room. I can't sleep, you whispered. And he, as he always did, Shoto let you in. It was something that started this year after a first semester hero work disaster. You suffered a horrendous villain attack that left countless civilians dead, and you could do nothing but watch. Many nights you stayed awake, unable to sleep, typically going into the shared space until you could only pass out. Until one day at three in the morning, when an awoken Shoto needed water, found yourself staring at the wall with tears in your eyes and eye bags staining your face. Shoto invited you to sleep in the same room with him that night, and the rest was history. 
Slipping into the bed next to you, Shoto stared at you as you breathed in deep. He grabbed your hand and placed it on his cheek so that your fingers could trace his skin instead of digging into your palms. Your fingers traced his face without saying anything. Eyes focused on the tip of your finger, rather than him. What happened? Shoto whispered as you drew nameless shapes onto his cheeks. Do you want to talk about it? Your head shook as your thumb shifted to glide over his cheeks. His skin was soft against all logic, toned and warm. It soothed you when your finger brushed against his lower lip, and Shoto forgot how to breathe when your steady breathing fanned gently across his skin. You took long and slow blinks as you shifted closer to him, and Shoto's heart stopped as your eyes finally met his. I'm sorry for kissing you on your birthday. You whispered, your thumb tracing the line between his lips. Your eyes were apologetic and sad, tired yet awake. Um, that was my losing bet. Shoto's heart both shrunk and grew at your words. It wasn't a kiss you had decided, it seemed. Sorry for it being a horrible kiss, he murmured. It was my first one. Your thumb stopped tracing his lips and your eyes widened in shock. Fuck! I'm so sorry! You exclaimed, humiliation spreading across your face. I didn't know! Well, I've never really cared about my first kiss. It's not something I concern myself over. Shoto calmed you as he pressed a gentle kiss to your fingers. While I can't say that was what I imagined for my first kiss, it wasn't bad. It only sucked that you left right away. His chest pounded as the words slipped from his lips. What a fucking idiot. Why did he say that? Your chuckle was light, as your head shook softly. <laughs> Me too. Can I try again? Shoto whispered, his tone full of desire and hesitation. Your thumb resumed its tracing on his lips as an embarrassed smile stretched on your face. He watched silently as your eyes fell to his lips and Shoto froze as they locked against his. The fingers tracing his lips moved to the bottom of his mouth, kissing him as if he was glass, one second from breaking. Everyone fretted about their first kiss, but Shoto would forever remember his second kiss from you, with you. You howled in laughter as he tried evaporating the pouring rain with his fire. <laughs> we don't have umbrellas. Your quirk doesn't work, and the ice was too much work for me. Shoto chuckled as he brought you closer to him. <laughs> the fire should work. <laughs> All it's doing is burning half my face instead of you holding my hand to keep me warm. Shoto laughed at your complaint as he shifted his jacket more towards you. His school uniform jacket was being used as a makeshift umbrella, as the rain was relentless and unforgiving. The two of you had hero work in some small town and being a few kilometers from the train station, and with nothing but your bodies, you were succumbed by the rain. Careful with the puddle! Shoto shouted as you looked down, but you sorely missed the puddle, and water sloshed entirely into your shoe. Your entire foot and sock were soaked to the bone, and you shrieked loudly. Your sloshing footsteps to keep up with Shoto was painful. Mm. 
Idiot. You are distracting me with your fire! Shoto looked at you with a wide grin. <laughs> Come on, there's that bus stop right there. Your eyes locked in with the weathered bus stop, which held dry ground underneath it. Nodding, you turned to start running towards it. However, Shoto scooped you off your feet and ran off towards the bus stop. Face burning with embarrassment, Shoto placed you down underneath the bus stop. The rain was loud as it crashed onto the ground and the metal overhead, and you were out of breath, staring up at Shoto, whose wet hair was plastered against his forehead. His skin shone in the dull light, and he looked dewy as he ran a hand through his hair. Do you want me to dry you? He asked, his eyes meeting your unsuspecting and shifting ones. You stepped back, startled, averting your gaze, your head nodding. My shoes and socks, please. You mumbled, as Shoto smiled fondly. Your eyes locked on Shoto once more, as his left hand was placed against your muddied feet. Warmth spread through your body at his touch, goosebumps rising as he dried both of them before standing up. He was too close to you, your face moving backward as he stood straight. Despite your now dry legs, the rest of your body remained cold as water dripped from your hair and clothes still. Your gaze fell again on his partially open lips. They were full, soft, and wet from the rain. They tinted red from the cold, and you wanted nothing more than to press your lips against his. Should we wait until the rain clears up? Shoto whispered as if scared to break this enchantment the two of you had placed yourselves under. I think so. You responded as you lifted onto your toes and kissed him wholeheartedly. Your lips glided together, still slick with the rain, and your arms snaked around his neck, drawing him in close as his hands held your waist gently. Tilting heads and open mouth kisses continued, and your chest felt like it was lit on fire as your chests pressed together. The rain continued to pour down, while the two of you continued to kiss. This marked your tenth kiss with Todoroki Shoto, yet both of you were still single. This is the final, final exam, and you're really going to give up? Shoto asked across from you. The two of you sat in your room studying for the English final. English was not your favorite subject, the grammar rules were complete bullshit, and when talking with visiting American students, they basically said grammar didn't matter. So you couldn't understand why you were here struggling over these rules, when English students didn't even abide by them. How fatuous. Oh, I just don't see the purpose of learning grammatically correct English. You groaned as you fell back onto your pillows. Shoto sighed as he placed the cheat sheet on the piles of papers on your bed. There were seven different subjects to prepare for, and so far, the two of you have finalized three. <sighs> Come on, traveler. Shoto sighed as he took your hand in his. Sit up. Let's see what's confusing you. What's confusing is realizing that I should be rich as fuck, but I'm not. You pouted as you let him pull you into a sitting position. Your cheeks turned warm as Shoto shifted over to sit right next to you, his knees touching yours as you looked at your immaculate study notes. Shoto's arm pressed against you as he explained the different verb tenses in English and how punctuation was such an important thing. The truth of the matter was, you were quite adept in English, 
It was just a subject that you had understood relatively easily after a certain point. But Shoto tutoring you was enough reason to pretend not to have a single clue. Do you get when to place the gerunds? Shoto asked from the side. Place it on action words when I feel like it, or whenever it makes sense. Huh. You responded back with an amused snort. I mean, that's not wrong, but it's not right. Shoto responded, shaking his head, and you scoffed, snapping your head towards him. But Shoto was a lot closer than you had assumed, as your cheek and lips dragged across his. Your eyes widened and you yanked away. The two of you had promised each other many kisses ago, you had to stop until the relationship was defined. But with growing tensions in the villain world, neither one of you wanted to set your feelings in fear that it would be for naught. Still, there was something magnetic and undeniable about him and you. And as the seconds in time seemed to pass for an eternity before a crashing force compelled the two of you to meet in the middle. Your hands rested on his chest as he grasped your chin, heads tilting to the side to allow a deeper angle as your lips danced as only lovers knew. The sounds of your joining and separating lips made your head spin when you pulled away, cheeks burning when his eyes fluttered open. Um, we should get back to studying, you whispered as Shoto cleared his throat, agreeing. <clears throat> um, so, adding the ing. Your fingers trembled as you pulled on your hero costume. You were so nervous. You've been fighting villains since your first year, but this was different. This was preparation for war that would end with death. Your steps were fast, and your breath was quick, short, frantic as you walked out, ready to meet up with your classmates. Tomorrow was to be your graduation, yet here you were, apprehensive about what the following day would bring. Traveler, Shoto's voice called for you, and your eyes focused on the man who held your heart in admiration. Your relationship was still undefined, but who knew if either of you would be here in the next 24 hours? Shoto! You smiled as the world seemed to blur, as he stopped in front of you, his hand taking yours in his. His grasp was warm, wary and gentle. It gave you unrealistic hope that everything would be okay, but you knew you had to be okay. You were a hero, and you needed to be reliable. I have something I need to tell you, he whispered, and you nodded. You were listening. When this is over, I'm going to take you on a date. Your eyes widened as a small and nearly scared chuckle left his lips. <laughs> it is long overdue. Shoto grinned at you as his fingers hooked under your chin, and your lips met him in a gentle kiss. It didn't last long, not at all, and before you could memorize the feeling of his lips against yours, he pulled away. Fluttering open, your eyes locked on Shoto's who has gone rigid. Tension sat heavy in your throat and your bones while you feared what's to come. What if this was it? There was already too much you regretted, and it seemed that Shoto was on the same page as your lips slammed back together in a crushing force. It was sloppy, hungry, and passionate. Tongues unable to battle as they desperately sought touch, teeth clashing against each other more often than not, and hands memorizing the outline of each other's silhouettes. His lips were hot against yours, and the calming smell of his scent overwhelmed you until you forced yourself to push away. You were heading to different areas of the upcoming battlegrounds. Good luck, you whispered. Don't die, 
you turned and began running off, making sure to take one last look at Shoto, who was running off too. I love you. Tears streamed down your eyes while you stared at the collapsed and defeated figures before you. Stupid, emotionally manipulating quirk. Brushing the streaming tears off your cheeks, you sniffled as you looked at Shoto. You had saved from these two characters. Your costume was torn, blood was dried on your legs and arms, and sweat poured against your skin. The battle was still ongoing. But as you studied Shoto, who was in a similar state to you, the world went quiet again. <laughs> Glad to see you're still alive. <laughs> you partially teased and fully spoke the truth as Shoto stood to his feet. <sighs> I have an important date to get to after all this. He smiled as his shoulders relaxed. <sighs> I won't go down yet. Two loud explosions were heard from Polo's sides, and the reality of the situation came back in full effect. We should get going, you whispered as your feet immediately started moving towards the explosion to your right. Be safe. Kiss me, he breathily demanded, and you paused in your movements. His eyes were firm and desperate for you to comply to his demand, and so, in the quickest response you could give him, your lips planted against his again. It was soft and too fast as you pulled away before he could even place his hands on your waist. Stay alert, you whispered before pushing away. Cheers rang heavy in your ears as you swayed to your feet. Everything hurt, but by the sounds of it, you guys had won. Pressing off the floor and onto your feet, a splitting headache shot your temple as you groaned. Arms surrounded you as victorious hugs went around, but you could barely keep up with who was hugging you as more and more people came around. Relief flooded you as you saw your friends all safe and sound, or at the very least not dead. The reality of what had just happened, of what you third years, pro heroes, and first and second year students alike went through, slammed through you in this almost anxious cry. You all could have died. There could have been no survivors. Crushing what ifs slammed through you while you made your way out of the huddle of people who had gathered in wistful celebration. Hands found your tear-stained cheeks, and you looked up with blurred vision at a familiar face. You're okay. Shoto whispered as you nodded, unable to speak as your crying grew even more. You're safe. You're here. I... I know. <laughs> you blubbered as your hands gripped the collar of his costume and slammed his lips against yours. This wasn't your usual kiss that flowed with feelings and passion. This was desperate. A kiss meant for the beginning of the war, not the end. Tears mixed between your lips as your arms wrapped him, eliminating any space between the two of you. Yet it wasn't enough. Your fingers raked through his messy hair, trying to convince your brain that this was real. He was real. This victory was real. Shoto responded with the same level of energy, and despite your burning lungs, you wouldn't break apart. No. Not yet. The two of you continued this desperate and needful kiss until you could kiss no longer. Shoto pulled away. His bruised red lips quirked into a smile while he brushed your hair to the side. You're... Beautiful.
Somehow, everyone thought that this first date with Shoto was going to be one to go down in history. Well, they weren't wrong, per se. The first date was short of a disaster, and it was so awkward. Your hands laid stiff at your side when Shoto walked you back to your new apartment. The air was silent between the two of you, and neither one of you spoke. For two people who have all but slept with each other, finally turning to put a label on this had made a typically relaxed duo into wooden statues. Only a week ago, the two of you had sunk to the ground in a desperate kiss, and now you couldn't make eye contact. Pathetic. Truly pathetic. Tonight was, um, fun. Shoto spoke up as you entered the building, his hand opening the door for you as you stepped in. Hearing that he was trying to overlook the apparent tension of the date, you laughed as you nodded your head. It's going down in the books as one of the best nights. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. He continued to joke while you climbed up the staircase with him a few steps below you. Well, I also can't compare you to anything else. Are you saying that I only get the best date pass because you're a virgin dater? I sort of hate how you phrased that, but, um, yes. Your lips curled into a smile when you turned around to glance at Shoto who was emulating the same smile on his face. <sighs> I feel so lucky. You sighed when you stepped out onto your floor. It went quiet again as you made your way to the front door of your space. So, I'll see you tomorrow for Bakugo's birthday? You asked, unlocking the front door, your body twisting to look at him. You were unsure of what to do now. Yeah. Do you want me to pick you up? You nodded, but you were contemplating hugging or kissing him. Would embracing him be a spit in his face granted the many exchanged kisses beforehand? Would kissing be too forward after such an awkward date? Deciding on a kiss on the cheek, you went in for your goodbye but it seemed Shoto had the same idea. Your lips met in an awkward kiss. A peck that almost sent you stumbling away, your face ablazing, and you laugh loudly in an attempt to disguise your painful awkwardness. <laughs> See you tomorrow! See you. The awkwardness of the first date thankfully never repeated again. Hmm. I'm not sharing with you, so stop giving me that look. Shoto grumbled while he took another bite of his strawberry cheesecake. But Shoto... He whined, trying to push up onto his chest to take a bite from his sweet dessert. He moved it further away, and you groaned falling onto his chest. I haven't even taken a bite out of it! Yeah, but you ate the entire other slice after claiming you weren't hungry, love. He rolled his eyes, but there was no malice behind it while you laughed into his chest. Turning your head, you watched Shoto place the last bite of the deliciously sweet cheesecake into his mouth. You needed a taste of it. You craved more. Licking your lips, a grin spread onto your face, and you pushed up off the couch, your eyes meeting Shoto's unsuspecting but cautious ones, and he stopped chewing. What are you? <clears throat> With the cheesecake still in his mouth, your lips pressed against his in a passionate affair. Your fingers rested on his jaw, and you felt Shoto trying to finish the food in his mouth. 
but in the act of pure lunacy, you pressed your tongue through his lips. The taste of the strawberry cheesecake flooded your senses while Shoto sat up, his hands on your hips adjusting you correctly. The flavour was light and sweet without being overwhelming, your grin widening when Shoto whined against your lips and a sharp pinch was felt on your ass. <sighs> what are you doing? Shoto wheezed, recomposing himself after you jolted away from him due to the pinch on your butt. Getting my fair share of cheesecake? You innocently stated while batting your eyes. You're a brat. A hungry one at that. Another kiss. One more. <laughs> Don't leave yet. Not until I have my kiss. You laughed so loudly it boarded a cackle as you once again pressed another kiss to Shoto's lips. You had work today, and Shoto didn't. In your attempt to leave, he had been demanding more and more kisses, unsatisfied with the ones you had been giving. You call me the brat. But look at you, mister. You won't let me leave, will you? Screw your job. Come and stay here with me. Brushing his messy, sleepy hair out of his face, you smiled at him, who was borderline pouting. I actually love my job. You insisted as Shoto tried to pull you into a hold you knew you wouldn't be able to fight off. I need to go. One more kiss before you leave. He said again as if you hadn't already given him 20 additional kisses past the initial farewell. Ugh, fine. You caved with no resistance leaning down and pressing your lips against his one last time. Your hands rested on his warm skin, your lips pressed in a soft and sweet kiss, but it seemed that Shoto was determined to get you to stay since his right hand tangled into your hair. Amusement shot through your veins as you were prevented from pulling away, so doing what you could only do, you pressed into the kiss harder your body moving to manipulate Shoto under your will, and the moment you sat against his hips, he broke apart to sigh. That was all you needed. He came back in with his lips partially open, but you blew a stream of air into his unsuspecting mouth, and his eyes snapped open, the spell broken when you tumbled off of him, your hands waving as you finally left to start your day. You could only hear his groan as you giggled, eventually making out of the door. I love you! Love you too. It was nearly one in the morning and you sat at the kitchen table with a blanket wrapped snugly around you. A teacup rested in your fingers as you took another sip from it. Shoto sat in a few seats away from you, paperwork splayed everywhere on the table, but he studied the ones in front of him. There had been significant issues with the paperwork surrounding a few cases he had solved, so taking it upon himself to figure it out alone Shoto had been studying 50 different casework papers meticulously for the past 74 hours straight. Ugh, I think it's time for bed. You called, standing up. Downing the rest of your tea, you went to wash the cup, but your eyes refocused on Shoto, 
who hadn't even reacted to your claim. Shoto? His bloodshot eyes snapped up to you and he nodded, his attention quickly returning back to the paper. I think I'm going to stay up for a little longer. I'll meet you in bed. You didn't want to agree. You shouldn't have. But Todoroki Shoto was by all and every means stubborn. Hesitantly nodding, you pressed a goodnight kiss to his temple. A kiss he attempted to return but instead kissed the air. Going to the bathroom, you finished getting ready for bed, brushing your teeth, washing your face, you climbed in. A little longer. That's what he had said. Blinking, you turned towards the alarm clock that displayed 2am, and you groaned. A little longer your ass. Sliding out of bed, you walked to the kitchen where Shoto was circling and highlighting different areas of the paper. Your arms wrapped around his shoulders. He didn't even flinch at your arrival. He laid his head against you for a millisecond before returning to his work. You could feel how tense and tired he was, yet he was trying to pretend he was okay. Sighing softly, it seemed that you were going to have to force him to sleep. So determined to put him to sleep, you began to press gentle kisses against his stiff neck. Never leaving his soft yet tense skin, you pressed more kisses against it, trailing down to his shoulders and back to his neck. The kisses were tender, sweet, unhurried. They spoke of your wish to get him to bed, and it seemed Shoto, at the very least, was put under some spell. His breathing had peaked as your lips continued their senseless trail, his eyes half closed, and his pen was seconds from falling from his fingers. Come to bed with me, handsome, you whispered, your lips finding themselves behind his ear, the sweetness and innocence of your affection overwhelming him. I gotta... I gotta finish this. He almost slurred, battling his internal war. You will finish this. You promised him, finally relieving your lips from his skin. Pulling out his chair, Shoto remained glued to it as his hands fell dead to his side. He was exhausted. A sad smile overcame you as you moved to stand before him, your hands cupping his firm cheeks to make him look at you. His eyes were red. They were exhausted. They were wet with oncoming tears. I'm so tired, he whispered as you nodded in understanding. I know, baby, so let's go to bed. But the paper. You sighed through your nose and you pressed a soft kiss to his lips. They spoke of how you needed him in bed with you, how this would be finished tomorrow. But he needed rest. Tomorrow, my love. You promised as you pulled him to his feet. Tomorrow. You finished getting him ready for bed, and Shoto fell asleep the moment his head hit the pillow. After tucking him into bed, you turned on your heel, making your way to the kitchen again. You would finish this for him. Gentle, comforting, relieving. Those were among the words you would use in describing your relationship with Shoto. It was a relationship between equals. It was soft. It was loving. Most nights ended with the two of you curled into one another, passed out full of love and happiness for each other. Tonight was not soft, although it was loving in a different sense. It would definitely leave the two of you passed out with love and happiness, but again for a different reason. The moan that escaped your lips was muffled by Shoto's tongue that swirled against your own. You were on your tiptoes while you allowed him to lead you about in the hallway. 
Yes, the two of you hadn't even made it back into your apartment before enacting on your horny feelings. Your lips were practically chaotic against one another, desperate to show just how badly you wanted each other, eager to prove that tonight was going to be perfect. Of course, this was partially your fault for being so aggressive in your kissing in the elevator. But the two of you had been dressed up smartly for a gala, and well, you could no longer resist Shoto in a fitted all-black suit. A grunt of discomfort came from your lips when your back was rammed into the doorknob of your apartment, Shoto apologizing against your lips while he struggled to unlock the door while kissing you with his eyes closed. The door opened and you both stumbled through the threshold, blindly and passionately kissing. The next thing you knew, Shoto had you lifted in the air, your legs immediately wrapping around his waist, your hips taking no time to grind against his crotch, to which he loudly confirmed that it was a feeling he enjoyed. Clinging to him desperately, you attempted to strip him off his clothes. The kiss did not still in its level of passion, only seeming to grow exponentially when his jacket landed on the floor with a thud. Noises of approval, soft cries of lust fueling both of you on as your lips dragged heatedly against one another. His hands gripped your ass when he slammed you into a wall, and your head slammed back, crying his name. Shoto wasted no time in latching onto the curve of your neck, his teeth nipping at your exposed skin. His hips bucking against yours, increasing the momentous pleasure. <sighs> the bed! You whimpered, your fingers stringing into his hair, pulling and tugging at the two coloured strands. You needed more as the heat in your stomach only grew in the passing seconds and actions. Please go to the room. <sighs> it's too far away. <sighs> Shoto gasped, his teeth sinking into the sweet spot on your neck. And you cried in electrifying pleasure. And you once again increased the speed of your dry humping. <sighs> Fuck. <sighs> Your lips quirked into an excited smile at the feeling of his palpable enthusiasm when he staggered to the couch that was a few small strides away. Dropping into the softness of the cushions, your eyes sparkled when you began to hastily remove your clothes. <sighs> I hope you're ready. <laughs> You grinned as you slid off your clothes, revealing to Shoto the fancy undergarments you wore underneath. Your grin turned sly when you watched him gulp harshly, his eyes roaming your body while his shirt and tie fell to the floor. Standing up, you pulled onto the belt loops of his slacks and easily twisted to have him stumbling, and now sitting down. His eyes took you in again as he groaned softly, and your eyes focused on the excitement in his pants. I'm in charge tonight. The taste of salt filled your senses as you pulled away from Shoto's tear-streaming face. <laughs> Do we? have to do this, he whispered when you looked away. You had to. I'm sorry. Was I not enough for you? A heavy weight sat on your chest while hot tears fell from his eyes faster than you could kiss them away. You've always been more than enough. Then why are you breaking up with me? You willed yourself not to cry, trying to remember the real reason why you had to break up with him. Because I'm not good enough. Ugh, don't fucking bullshit with me, Traveler. Shoto snapped, his lips curling into a sneer while he glared at you. If you're going to break up with me, do it because you want to do it. 
But don't fucking lie to my face like a coward. His words were hateful, spiteful, and bitter. The acid in your stomach seemed to shoot up to your throat when Shoto stood up, his head shaking. You know what? Forget about it. I don't want to fucking know. I don't know what else you want to hear! You snapped, your words vomiting up as frustration flared through you. That's the fucking truth! I'm not lying! So instead of being an asshole, fucking leave! You watched with streaming tears as Shoto scoffed, and without so much as a goodbye, he turned and left. The door slamming shut rattled your apartment, and you with it as you dropped to the floor weeping. You opened your front door with bleary eyes. It had been a little over a week since breaking up, and even if it was for the right reasons, you were wrecked. To your surprise, Shoto stood in front of the door, his gaze concentrated on his feet as his lips were pulled into a solid line. His hand held a bouquet of your favorite flowers and what seemed to be takeout from your favorite restaurant. <laughs> Why are you- I know why you broke up with me, he interrupted, his frown growing when he locked eyes with you. His gaze was sharp, steady, and hinting of desperation. I know that you think this is to help me, but that's bullshit. It's not bullshit. You mumbled stubbornly while you looked away. But it- doesn't explain why you're here. <sighs> I was an asshole the day you broke up with me. He sighed, his shoulders slumping as his free hand scratched the back of his neck. I was cruel and mean, and I want you back. I can't get back with you yet. Shoto sighed as he shook his head. <sighs> Why are you so stubborn? Why do you want to face this alone, Traveler? Keeping me away is only hurting you. I'm trying to see it from your point of view, but every time I only see it as you protecting me. I don't need you to- You hated that you missed him so much, despite knowing that you being with him was troublesome. And you hated that you were so in love with Shoto that instead of listening to him, your lips silenced him. Your hands rested on his shoulders as if to ground yourself, and he held your waist to make sure you wouldn't leave. It was a passionate kiss. A kiss that somehow apologized to him. A kiss that told him you were in the wrong. A kiss that relayed how scared you were of the past that finally caught up with you. He returned it in full. His kiss forgave you. His kiss understood your worries, but promised he wouldn't let something as trivial as that make him lose you. And his kiss apologized to you as well. It wasn't a long one, nor was it that physically intense. But as you parted, your eyes remained closed for some time. You were overwhelmed with the message and emotions behind it. Moreover, you wanted to remember how it felt to have him pressed against you in such an emotionally raw way. With a little more time, your eyes fluttered open to see Shoto's still closed, his breathing shallow with his emotional high. Do you want to come in? You asked, gesturing into your apartment. His eyes snapped open and you both turned to see the flowers and food that had been dropped during the kiss. Please? You let him in as the door closed behind the two of you. I guess I owe you an explanation? Thank you. 
Shoto smiled in nervousness at your shocked face. If your jaw went any lower, he worried you'd accidentally hurt a muscle. The crowd that had gathered around a spot that was supposed to be private were all whispering. Cameras shone on the two of you, capturing every small move. Shoto cleared his throat as he finally asked. <clears throat> Traveler, will you marry me? A ripping sob escaped your throat, and Shoto stood up off his knee in a panic. The velvet box ignored as he came to you, holding your trembling form as you cried. Yes! You cried as you slammed your face into his chest. Yes! I'll marry you! Shoto's lips curled into a broad smile as you finally looked up at him with streaming tears, and his hands rested against your cheek as he whispered, I love you. Before you could even respond, his lips connected with yours into a chaste, delicate kiss. Your hands gripped onto his biceps as you returned it just as delicately, not wanting the moment to end, and uncaring of the crowd, Shoto intensified it moving his lips fervently against yours as he drew you closer. It didn't matter that there was a crowd. In fact, the screaming only seemed to fuel Shoto onto continuing kissing his fiancée, and you were not slowing down in this passionate exchange either. I love you. <laughs>